Welcome back to the course Geology and Soil Mechanics. So, in the last lecture, we just started the soil compaction and we have seen what are the uh, different uh, say aspects of soil compaction. We have seen the definition of soil compaction and then uh, we found out that expulsion of air from the matrix uh, without any uh, entry of your uh, external thing. I mean basically you are getting uh, the air expulsion from the soil matrix and ultimately soil will be getting compacted. So, this is the procedure of soil compaction and then we saw that uh, what is the uh, laboratory experiment uh, we can do uh, for uh, getting the soil compaction uh, parameters uh, that is standard Proctor test and we have defined different say dimensions of the standard Proctor test uh, in setup and then uh, we have seen what is our gamma uh, d that is uh, dry unit weight and to obtain the maximum dry unit weight uh, you have to vary the moisture content that is the water content in the soil matrix and you have seen in the last uh, lecture that if you increase initially if you increase the uh, water content your gamma d will be going on increasing and at certain point it will reach the maximum that is defined as gamma d max and corresponding water content will be defined as the optimum moisture content that is OMC. And then if you increase water content further you will get the reduction in uh, dry unit weight that is gamma d. And we have discussed why you are getting this kind of say uh, behavior that is if you continuously increase water content initially gamma d will increase and then it will reach the peak and then it will come down. So, uh, we have discussed this aspect and then basically we have established one curve that is known as zero air void curve uh, for different magnitude of uh, water content and we have seen that uh, at zero air void line basically if you if, if the point is lying on zero air void line that means there is no air inside the soil matrix. So, soil will be completely saturated that means your degree of saturation is 1 and uh, there will be no uh, air inside the soil matrix as uh, it will form the two phase diagram that means soil solid and water that is all. And then uh, basically uh, we have seen that as you can see from this figure. So, you have got the compaction curve like this. Okay. So, initially increment in the gamma d it will reach the maximum and then it will fall down due to the dispersion of the soil particles. Now, I mean we have discussed in the last class that in no case basically your theoretical maximum say at this at any water content say if I consider this is my water content at any water content this will be your theoretical maximum gamma d that means when uh, uh, you have uh, zero air void in the soil matrix, but it is not achievable uh, uh, and practically you will be getting the gamma d at this point which is lying on the compaction curve. Right? So, the compaction whenever you are showing the zero air void line, so that will draw the limit of the gamma d for different magnitude of water content. Now, uh, we have seen in the last lecture, but anyway we are going to repeat little bit. So, what are the different factors affecting compaction? So, effect of soil type, the soil type that is grain size distribution as we discussed in the last lecture, grain size distribution, shape of the soil grains, specific gravity of soil solids and amount and type of clay mineral present has a great influence on the gamma d max that means the maximum dry unit weight and OMC. And we have discussed that why uh, these factors are affecting the compaction because the grain size distribution based on that you will be getting well graded or poorly graded. So, if the soil is poorly graded then your compaction will be lesser than uh, the well graded sample. Similarly, the shape of soil grains if you have the angular soil grain as well as the rounded soil grain. So, depending on that you will be getting different compaction the rounded one will be giving you less compaction. Uh, degree of compaction uh, as compared to the angular grain. Similarly, the clay minerals right. So, clay minerals will be having some uh, charge on the particles already we have seen uh, from the clay mineral topic uh, that and because of that basically your water affinity as well as the when you add water in, in the soil basically whether soil will be soil particles will be getting attracted or 
uh, getting uh, dispersed. So, based on that you will be getting different degree of compaction. So, these are the issues uh, and of course, the specific gravity if the soil solid or the solid particles are little bit heavier. So, it will be compacted more. So, these are the factors which uh, I mean will be affecting the compaction effort of the soil. Now, coming to the effect of compaction effort. Now, as the compaction effort is increased, compaction effort means uh, that means if you have seen the uh, uh, standard Proctor test, basically we are giving 25 number of blows on each layer, right? And we are compacting each layer by 25 blows of the standard hammer. Now, if you increase the number of blows, that means you are uh, giving more energy to the matrix or if you are if you are, you are giving more compaction effort basically. So, you are providing more compaction effort. So, if you increase the number of blows or if you increase the compaction effort, the maximum gamma d is also increased. That means, your maximum gamma d will be continuously increasing with the increase in compaction effort. Whereas, as the compaction effort is increased, the OMC is decreased to some extent. I mean when your gamma d uh, is going on increasing that is gamma d max e will be also increasing and the gamma d that means the curve will be getting shifted towards the left. Whereas, OMC will be decreasing with increase in compaction effort and so that means your compaction curve if you get the compaction curve and if you increase the compaction effort basically the compaction curve will be getting shifted towards the left side uh, of the uh, plot. That means, if you look at this figure. So, this is your 0 air void line. So, as we can establish that thing for different magnitude of water content. Now, with 20 number of blows per layer, so you are getting this compaction curve and for 25 number of blows you are getting this compaction curve, for 30 you are getting this, for 50 you are getting this. That means, your compaction curve is moving in the left direction and basically your OMC, this was your OMC for 25. 20 number of blows, this is the OMC for 25 number of blows. So, your OMC is decreasing in this direction, whereas your gamma d is increasing. If you look at your gamma d is increasing, so this is your gamma d and this is your uh, OMC is decreasing, right. And if you uh, join all the peaks, basically you will be getting a line which is uh, shown by the dashed line and that is known as line of optimums. That means, you are connecting all the uh, OMC point and you are getting the line of optimum. Okay. So, this is the plot which will indicate the effect of compaction effort on the degree of compaction. Now, coming to the modified Proctor test. So, as you have seen the standard Proctor test is generally used in the laboratory and we still use that, but with the development of heavy rollers. That means, if you go to the field in earlier days, you have seen very conventional kind of roller. Uh, there will be one wheel at the front and there will be two wheels at the back. Still, uh, in India, there are a uh, lot of agencies are going are using this kind of rollers, but these are very uh, old type of rollers. But with the development of heavy rollers nowadays, and you might have seen those heavy rollers as well as the modern rollers, and their use in field compaction the standard Proctor test was modified to better represent the field condition. So, that means, now you are having more uh, modern rollers as well as uh, which uh, those rollers are giving more compaction uh, effort or the compaction energy to the ground. Now, to simulate that thing the standard Proctor test has been modified uh, to get uh, those uh, results or those predictions uh, and then basically that is known as or that is termed as modified Proctor test. Now, the test procedure and all those things will be remaining same only thing is that the dimensions of the I mean setup test setup are going to be different. Now, a mold volume of 944 centimeter cube is used in modified Proctor, diameter of the mold is 101.6 millimeter. Now, number of layers instead of 3 layers earlier in case of standard Proctor test you have used 3 layers, now you are going to use uh, 5 layers, 5 uh, I mean subsequent layers. Now, hammer weight has been increased uh, that is 4.54 kg for modified Proctor and height of fall also has been increased 45.7 centimeter. So, now you will be giving the number of blows on each layer and you will be compacting the soil. Now, because it increases the compaction effort the modified Proctor test results in an increase in gamma d max accompanied by a decrease in OMC. 
which is quite obvious right. In just now we have seen that if you increase the compaction effort your gamma d will be increasing whereas OMC will be decreasing. So, modified proctor means you are giving more compaction effort as compared to the standard proctor. So, you are expecting that your gamma d max will be increasing if you use standard proctor and if you use modified proctor in the modified proctor as compared to the standard proctor you will be getting higher gamma d max as well as decrement or the reduction in OMC. Now, coming to the field compaction. So, what are the different types of rollers you generally see in the field uh, for uh, field compaction? First one is a smooth wheel rollers which is also known as smooth drum rollers. So, these are suitable for proof rolling subgrades and for finishing operations of fields with sandy and clay soil. So, both sandy and clay soils uh, you can use this uh, smooth wheel rollers and this will be used for proof rolling for subgrades and for finishing of operation. Finishing means just on the top surface of the fields or something like that when you are going to finish the uh, compaction operation right. Provide 100 percent coverage under the wheels. We will see those uh, I mean photos of different types of rollers and you will appreciate that uh, in case of smooth wheel roller that means you will be having a complete drum kind of uh, wheel right and the drum kind of wheel, wheel you will be getting or you will expect that 100 percent coverage under the wheels will be achieved. Now, coming to the next type of roller that is pneumatic rubber tired roller. So, I will be showing all the photos so that you will be differentiating among the rollers. So, pneumatic rubber tired rollers basically these are better in many respects than smooth wheel rollers and can be used for sandy as well as clay soil. Uh, compaction which is achieved by a combination of pressure and kneading action. So, in the pneumatic tire roller uh, in case of smooth wheel roller only you are getting, give, getting the pressure uh, on the uh, soil layer uh, and the soil layer is getting compacted due to the pressure created by the smooth wheel. Whereas, in case of pneumatic tire rubber tire roller you are getting pressure coming from the tires as well as you are getting some kneading action. So, kneading action means you generally uh, you have you might have seen uh, the preparation of roti. Uh, uh, so, at that time you basically uh, mix uh, water uh, with uh, the flour and then you, you do some kneading action. So, that, uh, that kind of action you are expecting from this kind of rollers that rubber tired roller and you will be getting more compaction. So, you are getting pressure as well as the kneading action from this rubber uh, pneumatic rubber tired roller. They produce 70 to 80 percent coverage under the wheels, but uh, as compared to the smooth wheel roller there you are getting 100 percent coverage below the wheel base wheel, but here actually you will be getting 70 to 80 percent coverage. So, the coverage means you some areas below the wheel will be uh, will not be covered or will not be compacted. So, basically that uh, thing you need to think about uh, when you are uh, talking about the number of passage and how you are orienting the roller on the soil layer. Now, coming to the uh, another kind of roller that is shift food rollers. These are drums with a large number of projections. So, you have very similar to the uh, smooth wheel roller where you have a cylindrical drum uh, which will be acting as a wheel ok. And on the wheel basically you will be having a number of large number of projections. Projections means some spikes ok. So, those spikes basically will try to uh, compact the soil uh, uh, in a more effective way. Uh, now, uh, what uh, you can uh, consider suppose if you I mean what you can draw the analogy suppose you have the elephant which is going to compact the soil and you have some sheep ok uh, which is going to uh, I mean compact the soil. Now, uh, as compared to the though elephant is uh, very heavy and bulky, but you will be getting more compaction or very effective compaction from the sheep food because it will give some point. Uh, kind, point kind of uh, say compaction uh, thing. So, it will try to knead uh, or the kneading action will be more in case of sheep food as compared to the elephant food ok. These rollers are most effective in compacting clay soil. So, in case of clay soil these uh, I mean sheep food rollers will be more uh, effective uh, because you it will be having the spikes and those spikes will be compact the soil in a more effective way. Now, coming to the next type of rollers that is vibratory rollers, these are extremely efficient in compacting granular soils that means sandy soil or gravelly soil. Because as, as I told you so if you want to put some food grains in the in the glass jar or plastic jar basically you shake it right. 
So, this kind of shaking uh, is being produced by these vibratory rollers and uh, this kind of shaking will try to compact the soil. So, and from the from your own experience you can you can appreciate that in case of granular soil that means, which is having uh, some uh, larger particle size or larger grain size those will be compacted in a uh, more effective way uh, than the uh, other soils right in case of vibration. So, you are uh, this vibratory rollers the wheels will be producing some vibration it will shake and it will try to compact the soil. The vibrators can be attached to smooth wheel pneumatic rubber tired or ship foot rollers to provide vibratory effects to the soil. So, whatever rollers you have seen that is smooth wheel roller or pneumatic rubber tire roller or ship foot rollers. So, all the wheels can be attached with some vibrators which will generate the vibration and the whole wheel base will vibrate and it will try to compact the granular soil. Now, you see some photos of uh, these different types of rollers. So, this is your smooth wheel roller. So, as I told you, you will be having some cylindrical drum. So, this will act as a wheel. So, this wheel will, will be uh, compacting basically the soil and you are getting 100 percent coverage because below the wheel you are getting the 100 percent coverage as I uh, told you. So, this is known as smooth wheel roller whereas, this is your pneumatic rubber tired roller. These are all pneumatic rubber tires. Okay. Now, below the wheel you can see that 70 to 80 percent coverage uh, is possible and this kind of because this this uh, these rubber tires are flexible because of that you are getting pressure as well as the kneading action as we have discussed. Now, this is your ship food roller this is a wheel kind of smooth wheel kind of uh, wheel whereas, you have the large number of projections. So, you see these are all projections. So, this will try to uh, give or try to provide some kneading action in the soil and this is very very effective for clay type of soil compaction. This is coming for your vibratory rollers as you can see this is known as if you have single drum that means there are these are two drums two drums means two wheels. So, if you have uh, both the drums which are vibrating so this is known as dual drum vibratory rollers whereas, if you have the single drum which is vibrating then it will be known as single drum vibratory roller. Now, if you go back to the smooth wheel roller. So, now you can attach vibrator with this smooth wheel and because of that this wheel will be vibrating and it will try to compact the soil whereas, the back side this is your rubber tire. So, that will not be uh, vibrating. So, uh, you, this kind of roller is known as single drum vibratory roller whereas, where whatever we have seen here. So, this is I mean if both the drums are vibrating. So, this is known as dual drum vibratory roller. Okay. So, at least we have got some idea that how the different rollers are uh, I mean now you can you can appreciate uh, if you go to the site and if you see these kind of rollers at least you can predict okay, what type of vibration uh, what type of compaction they are providing and what type of soil basically you are using. Now, specifications for field compaction in most specifications for earthwork it is instructed to achieve uh, a compacted field dry unit weight of 90 to 95 percent of gamma d max determined in the laboratory. Now, if I ask you that what should be the field compaction degree of field compaction. Now, basically you are doing some test or performing some test in the laboratory uh, either by standard proctor test or modified proctor test and then basically you are going to the field and then that will be simulated whatever uh, proctor test you have performed that will be simulated by uh, putting the layers of soil and then you are compacting that thing with the help of rollers. right? So, I mean these two things must be simulated. Now, at some point of time you will be saying okay, my compaction uh, in the field is over when the, the condition or the requirement is uh, it should achieve 90 to 95 percent of gamma d max determined in the laboratory. So, in the laboratory you have got either from standard proctor or modified proctor you have got some gamma d max from the compaction curve and in the field if you can achieve 90 to 95 percent of gamma d max then you say okay, my compaction is over or I mean whatever compaction I have achieved that is sufficient enough to take care of the further activities. Now, the relative compaction can be expressed as so you need to quantify that how much compaction you have got in the field. So, therefore, the relative compaction uh, word has come into the picture. 
So, relative compression can be expressed as R in percentage that is gamma D field whatever you are observing in the field that is um, uh, dry unit weight uh, available in the field by gamma D max in the laboratory. Okay. So, whatever you have observed in the laboratory into 100 percent. So, this should be say gamma D field by gamma D max uh, into 100 it should be 90 to 95 percent. So, uh, 95 percent if you achieve or if you more if you achieve more than that then it will be uh, said as very good compaction you have performed. For the compaction of granular soil specifications are sometimes written in terms of required relative density. right? So, basically uh, in case of granular soil if you if you try to compact the sandy soil or gravelly soil. Uh, so, basically the word relative density is will be coming to the picture and you know from uh, your earlier background or earlier discussion that relative density is very very handy parameter to uh, talk about the densification or the denseness of the uh, I mean sandy particle right or the granular soil right. So, in case of compaction also if we say okay, I mean relative uh, density okay, uh, required relative density is this much in the field then you can compact or you can uh, provide the rollers number of passage or uh, vibration energy or all those things you can vary to obtain or to achieve that much relative density. So, in granular soil this is a very very uh, important uh, uh, parameter which will define the compaction uh, degree of compaction basically. Now, determination of field unit weight of compaction procedures for determining the field unit weight. Now, there are several procedures available that means, uh, basically you can find out the unit weight in the laboratory there is no issue and you know there are several methods available to find out the unit weight in the laboratory. right? So, I have though I have not discussed that thing specifically, but if you do any lab course or if you perform some laboratory experiments you can find out there are several ways uh, you can find out the unit weight of soil in the laboratory, but in the field how will obtain or how will uh, find out the unit weight because already you have compacted the layers. right? So, already I mean in the layer wise you have compacted uh, through the passage of your uh, uh, rollers different rollers and you have compacted and now if you are. So, basically you need to find out gamma d in the field right you know gamma d max in the laboratory, okay, but you need to know gamma d observed in the field. So, how to find out those things? So, there are several procedures available uh, first one is sand cone method, second one is rubber balloon method and third one is nuclear method. Okay. Uh, among these three I will be discussing the sand cone method uh, in the next lecture. So, thank you very much. So, in the next lecture we will be talking about sand cone method and other uh, details of the compaction topic. Thank you.